Um, hello, my name is Marissa Bigsby. I'm a music major here at Central, but my true passion is in the world of sound design and post production. And what you'll hear today is just under five minutes of what's going to be, or what is about 20 minutes of audio. Um, but before I play the audio, I'd like to give a little bit of background on the project. The project is called Fade Away. It's a story that I wrote. Um, it's an audio horror slash thriller story, and it's told in a way that's kind of reminiscent of your old timey radio dramas. Um, but unlike the old timey radio dramas, um, Fade Away doesn't have a narrator and is instead heard through Torin, the main character. So you hear things from like his perspective and um, you can like feel and hear and experience everything that he's feeling, hearing and experiencing. Um, Fade Away features different aspects of media production, including voice acting, sound design, with fully sound effects, post-production, original music, and more. And after the audio is played, I'll very briefly go into what some of these things are. So. I'm home! Welcome home! Power off. That was work. <sighs> it was work. Oh my god, Eve was, was a, a total, total today. today. How did you know? Anyway, Tess is one of our new waitresses and is a total sweetheart. And today while she was carrying a tray to bring to her customers, she tripped and fell and broke most of the plates. Poor girl was already crying about it. And then Eve walked in and chewed her out, literally screaming at her in front of her table. And I know for a fact the entire restaurant could hear. That's crazy. Uh, it is! So Tess starts crying even harder, and Eve starts to get at her about her crying, saying something like, This isn't how an adult behaves. I have never Tess. had to share with that. Was All of a sudden, I'm stopped. The place was so quiet. I, um, I don't know what you mean about what. A pin drop. Anyway, Tess looks up at Eve and says, You know what? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with this place, and I'm done with your doesn't give a crap about your employee's attitude. I quit. Eve tried to give her some bull that she can't just quit on the spot because it's unprofessional. Tess turned around and said, screw your professionalism, and most of all, screw you, and left. So I know you don't like presents. <sighs> Torin. It, 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 just, just hold on, let me finish. I know you don't like presents, but I also know that you enjoy weird, creepy things. I do enjoy those. So I got you this weird, creepy music box from a thrift shop I was at today. <gasps> Torin, you shouldn't have. Seriously, you shouldn't have. <laughs> you don't like it? No, I love it, but that's the problem. Have you listened to it yet? Sadly, no. The lady who runs the shop was uh, a little weird about it, so I didn't have the chance. What does that mean? She kept telling me... You don't want this, like I'm supposed to know what that means. That's, uh, cryptic? That's a nicer way to put it. <laughs> so, wanna open this bad boy? I don't know, Cass. What if it's something scary and terrifying? Ooh! Ha ha. <sighs> well, here we go. Was... Anticlimactic? Yeah, pretty much. 
I was waiting for our blood to boil and, I don't know, other horrible things to happen. <laughs> well, thank you for the gift. I'll put it with my other cursed knickknacks. Oh, I hope you're hungry. I'm making your favorite. Pulled pork sandwiches. You know it. Oh, can you wash up and help me? What the hell? Are you expecting someone? No. Hold on, I'm coming! Hello? Who is it? No one. There was no one at the door. That's weird. Yeah. Maybe it was one of the neighborhood kids. Maybe. So, sound is an incredible universal language. It is beautiful, but it is also deceptive. And so much so that all of you have been deceived by what you heard. And what I mean by that is that all of these sounds that you heard are not of the natural world, meaning that they weren't recorded with like the voices. I made them myself and put them in after all of the recording was done. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Oscar Wilde came up with the idea in The Decay of Lying that all bad art comes from copying nature and being realistic, and all great art comes from lying and deceiving and telling beautiful, untrue things. <clears throat> so the sounds that you heard again were created by me, and they are created in artificial and sometimes comical ways, and this is known as an art called Foley. <clears throat> Foley is the art of performing sounds for all types of media. There are many different stories as to how Foley first came to be, but Foley started with a man named Jack Foley, and he truly was a jack of all trades. He was a director, a producer, sound engineer. He was a comic strip artist. He did literally everything. Um, and he did sound work for the 1929 film Showboat, which originally started out as a silent film, and then with some, like, up and new coming technology with sound, they decided to add in sound later. So Foley and his team added, excuse me, claps, footsteps, and any other sounds that they can make using whatever props they could find around the studio. And as this art had no aim, name when it began, they, it was agreed that due to his creativity and his contribution in sound and films, it would be called Foley to help commemorate his and honor his excellence. But Foley is just one aspect of sound design. In the words of John Everest, sound design is the overall aural picture of the film. It brings audiences in the time and space of the story. It creates worlds that would not otherwise exist and recreates atmospheres of the past. Sound design includes elements of layered tracks in order to create different sounds like ambience, diegetic, meaning sounds that are produced on set, and non-diegetic sounds, which are sounds that are added in post-production, and Foley work. Sound design is similar to putting together a puzzle. A sound designer's job is to make sure that any spoken dialogue flows well in ways and patterns that are similar to regular speech and conversation. <clears throat> Balancing audio levels of different tracks, adding sound effects like reverb or equalization to audio tracks, and finally putting all of the spoken dialogue, sound effects, and music together to form one cohesive work. As I mentioned before, this work was a nod to the radio dramas of the past. Radio dramas were considered their own art form, so much so that there are literal handbooks that were created to instruct voice actors, producers, directors, sound engineers, and others on particular ways of creating works for radio dramas. And radio dramas are greatly important to the history of entertainment. <clears throat> before the TV, almost every household had a radio. This was not only a source of news and updates, but for entertainment. And after World War I, broadcasters realized the potential for more than news and music, and thus radio dramas were created. And they were an enormous success. There were many programs that would air weekly, and they were a great way to help distract the population from the trauma that the Great War had caused. 
and they remained popular until like mid 1980s to early 1990s when TVs started to become really regular appliances in households. Now, that being said, radio is something that we still do listen to today. I know we have a radio station here on campus, um, but in the early 2000s emerged something that we all know and love called podcasts. Podcasts are audio files that include spoken words, news coverage, opinion pieces, history and research, and audio dramas. The term podcast was first coined in 2004 by Guardian reporter Ben Hammersley, and podcasts grew in popularity each year, and with COVID, podcast consumption has skyrocketed, making podcasts into one of the most consumed media sources from 2020 to 2022. So, yeah, in conclusion, uh, the importance of radio drama is still heard today, and sound it, sorry, and sound is one of the most crucial aspects of any and all media that you consume in everyday life. 